Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today, I'm a machine gun. But seriously, this is the episode you've been waiting for, the bump stock ban. SB Tactical, the originator of the pistol stabilizing brace, set the bar for innovation and product development in the PDW pistol category. From the insanely popular SBM4 to the adjustable SBA3 and even kits for pump action firearms, SB Tactical braces are available for a wide variety of firearm platforms in fixed, adjustable, and side folding models. To get 15% off your legally transported and carried pistol braces, use the code TGC15 over at sb-tactical.com. Earlier this week, the Department of Justice published a press release that it had finalized a rule which amended the regulations of ATF, clarifying that bump stocks now fall within the definition of machine gun under federal law because they allow a shooter of a semi-automatic firearm to initiate a continuous firing cycle with a single pull of the trigger. Put the pitchforks down. Those are their words, not mine. ATF also updated the website with what you need to know about bump stocks and how to properly dispose of yours. And somehow, boating was not an option. Here's the fast facts of what you need to know. The rule will go into effect 90 days from the date it is published in the Federal Register. More on that in a bit. ATF states that individuals can either destroy their bump stocks by melting, shredding, or crushing the device. Another option is to cut them so long as the bump stock is completely severed in the areas constituting critical design features, denoted by the red lines in pictures provided by ATF. Here's an example with the slide fire stock. Any method of destruction must render the device incapable of being readily restored to function, like eight hours in a machine shop. I wonder if you get bonus points for melting one into a cooler. See what I did there? If you've been living under a rock for the past year or so, then you would have missed all the fun when ATF published a notice of proposed rulemaking to alter the definition of machine gun. The Gun Collective even participated by producing a high-speed video showing how a bump stock actually functions and that it falls outside the definition of the term machine gun. As with any final rule that is published, the agency publishing it has to respond to comments that were received during the rulemaking period. The final rule in this instance is 157 pages long and discusses the background of what led to the proposed rule, responses to comments made, and then the final rule itself. Let's break down some numbers first. ATF received over 186,000 comments. 119,264 expressed support for this proposed rule, leaving only 66,182 in opposition and 657 where the position of the individual could not be determined. That means almost two times as many people wrote comments expressing support for this garbage as there were opposing it. Out of those 66,182 comments in opposition, 40,806 were a form submission by an organization on behalf of its members. And the remaining 25,736 comments yielded yet another 12,636 form letters, with only 12,740 unique comments. Without diving too deep into the analysis of the comments in opposition, we're going to discuss a few points of interest that people have had. A number of viewers wanted to know about the possibility of a grandfather provision, amnesty, reopening of the registry, and how or if this would affect binary triggers. Grandfather clause or some form of amnesty? Not happening. Here's what the government says. In 1968, the government did leave open the possibility of an amnesty registration at the Attorney General's discretion. However, since 1986, following the passage of everyone's favorite amendment, ATF has held the position that amnesty was not legally permissible. Essentially, their position is that Section 922.0 would prevent the registration of machine guns during an amnesty period. Section 922.0 prohibits possession of machine guns which were not lawfully possessed prior to the effective date of May 19, 1986. Since 922.0 was enacted after the amnesty provision of the NFA, its provisions would prevail over any earlier enactment in conflict. This means that any future amnesty period could not permit the lawful possession and registration of machine guns prohibited by Section 922.0. And to the extent that anyone pointed at previous ATF rulings for support, they dismissed that idea by saying that those were in relation to destructive devices, not machine guns. So, like I said, based on the government's position, you can forget about grandfather clauses or amnesty for machine guns. 
What about binary triggers? Well, the final rule states that the Department of Justice disagrees that binary triggers will be reclassified as machine guns under this rule. While semi-automatic firearms may shoot one round when the trigger is pulled, the shooter must release the trigger before another round is fired. Even if this release results in a second shot being fired, it is the result of a separate function of the trigger. This is also the reason that binary triggers cannot be classified as machine guns under the rule. One function of the trigger results in the firing of only one round. Then they compare this to bump stocks and state that those use the recoil energy of the firearm to create an automatic sequence of fire with a single pull of the trigger. Okay, and while those of you with binary triggers may feel safe, remember, this is the same agency that told you for the past 10 years that bump stocks were legal. They couldn't possibly change their minds. Some other interesting points that were argued by commenters included violations of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, the actual operation of a bump stock, and ATF's history of being dishonest. With regard to the ADA, a few comments suggested that bump stocks were devices that could assist people who had nerve damage or physical disabilities. The Department of Justice, as you may have guessed, disagreed with that assessment. It first noted that the ADA only applies to state and local governments, not the executive branch of the federal government, so regardless, the regulation wouldn't be a violation of the ADA anyway. It did note that ATF was covered under the Rehabilitation Act, but the rule would not be a violation of that one either. With regards to the actual operation of a bump stock, the final rule stated that ATF explained bump stock type devices are generally designed to operate with the shooter shouldering the stock of the device in essentially the same manner a shooter would use an unmodified semi-automatic shoulder stock, maintaining constant forward pressure with the non-trigger hand on the barrel shroud or foregrip of the rifle, and maintaining the trigger finger on the device's extension ledge with constant rearward pressure. ATF further explained that bump stocks are designed to allow the shooter to maintain a continuous firing cycle after a single pull of the trigger by directing the recoil energy of the discharged rounds into a space created by the sliding stock in a constrained linear rearward and forward path. This is a distinctive feature of the bump stock type devices and enables the unique functioning and operation of these devices, according to them. The device captures and harnesses the firearm's recoil to maintain a continuous firing sequence and thus properly described as a self-acting or self-regulating mechanism. Again, their words, not mine. To close the loop, ATF stated that this mechanism allows the firing of multiple rounds through a single function of the trigger because, as explained in the notice of proposed rulemaking, ATF's interpretation that the phrase single function of the trigger includes a single pull of the trigger. Here's the kicker, and remember, this is their words, not mine. The department disagrees that a shooter repeatedly actuates functions or pulls the trigger of a semi-automatic firearm using a bump stock type device with the non-trigger hand by pushing the firearm forward. In fact, they say the shooter pulls the trigger once and allows the firearm and attached bump stock type device to operate until the shooter releases the trigger finger or the constant forward pressure with the non-trigger hand. The non-trigger hand never comes into contact with the trigger and does not actuate function or pull it. By maintaining constant forward pressure, a shooter relies on the device to capture and direct recoil energy for each subsequent round and requires no further manipulation of the trigger itself, according to them. I signed a memorandum directing the Attorney General to propose regulations to ban all devices that turn legal weapons into machine guns. Well, I suggest you gentlemen invent a way to put a square peg in a round hole. One of my favorites was the response to a comment's extensive description of ATF's prior lack of candor, which included instances where ATF had committed institutional perjury before the courts in the context of criminal prosecutions and supporting probable cause showings for search warrants, committed deception and delayed responding with respect to congressional inquiries regarding the NFRTR inaccuracies as well as the Fast and Furious investigation, and also misled the public about the accuracy of the NFRTR. According to the commenter, these episodes highlight a pattern of procedural irregularities that should draw further scrutiny of this rulemaking. The department responded that these comments were beyond the scope of rulemaking, and they noted that ATF has committed available resources to develop the notice of proposed rulemaking and respond to comments as part of the rulemaking process. In developing this rulemaking and responding to comments, ATF has followed all established procedures and complied with all relevant policies and requirements. <laughs> I'll let you guess what comment that came out of. So, what did the final rule actually do? Let's start with the definition of a machine gun. It's defined as any weapon which shoots, is designed to shoot, or can be readily restored to shoot automatically more than one shot without manual reloading by a single function of the trigger. 
The term shall also include the frame or receiver of any such weapon, any part designed and intended solely and exclusively, or a combination of parts designed and intended for use in converting a weapon into a machine gun, and any combination of parts from which a machine gun can be assembled if such parts are in the possession or under the control of a person. The rule adds the following language to the end of that definition, and this isn't verbatim for the purposes of keeping it easy to follow. Keep in mind, in this section, ATF is defining what the term automatically and single function of the trigger means in the context of the machine gun definition. For the purposes of this definition, the term automatically means functioning as the result of a self-acting or self-regulating mechanism that allows the firing of multiple rounds through a single function of the trigger. And single function of the trigger means a single pull of the trigger and analogous motions. The term machine gun includes a bump stock type device, which is a device that allows semi-automatic firearms to shoot more than one shot with a single pull of the trigger by harnessing the recoil energy of the semi-automatic firearm to which it is affixed so that the trigger resets and continues firing without additional physical manipulation of the trigger by the shooter. And don't worry about bump stock, we're getting rid of it where it'll be at. I mean, you don't have to complicate the bill by adding another two paragraphs. We're getting rid of it. I'll do that myself. I know, that's total nonsense. Fear not though, hours after this rule was announced, a lawsuit was filed, the first one might I add, on behalf of an individual plaintiff, Firearms Policy Coalition, Firearms Policy Foundation, and the Madison Society Foundation. In addition to the lawsuit itself, a motion for preliminary injunction was also filed. If granted, that would stop the rule from going into effect until the case was decided. You can find those filings in the description down below. And for those of you who are interested in supporting the lawsuit, check out the link in the description as well. Now, a number of people who have bump stocks want to know what they should do with them. Well, as I mentioned before, the final rule does not go into effect until 90 days after it's published in the Federal Register. That said, if a court enjoins the government from enacting the rule, it could push back that timeline. So, if you have a bump stock, you may not want to run out to destroy it just yet. And for those of you who are going to say that you're not destroying yours or turning it in, well, it's your life. Just be aware that you face a potential penalty of 10 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. <sighs> that was a lot to get through. I want to know what you guys think of this. Are you guys in support of the ban? Are you opposed to it? Did you file a comment or send in a form letter? Where do babies come from? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. That's it for this episode. If you learned anything from the show, help us out and hit that like button. Make sure you share this with your friends. Don't forget to get subscribed if you enjoyed the video, consider supporting us via the links down in the video description. Be sure to check out the Gun Collected podcast on iTunes, and as always, thanks for watching. Behind me, you know the meme with the ATF, like, hey guys, come look at this? Open your mouth and, and. The non-trigger hand they're saying is never, they say the non-trigger hand never, the ATF has followed in developing, in developing this rule, one more time. ATF has followed all established procedures. I'll let you guess where. <laughs> I'll let Now, a number of people who have had bump. So, okay, I, I got it. The shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.